Let me be clear about why I'm making this video. When I learned about what masculinity and femininity are, so many doors opened up to me. I started understanding why I like behaving in a certain way, why other men behave in a certain manner, why women behave in the way they do, and why there's such a difference between what makes a man fulfilled and what makes a woman fulfilled. In modern society, you don't get taught these things, and these things are extremely important if you want to understand why you biologically and conceptually behave the way you do. Now why should you listen to me? Because I stumbled upon the truth about masculinity and femininity in The Way of the Superior Man by David Dida. That's a book by the way. Highly recommended if you're a woman or a man. And it's the basis for what I'm about to say in this video. What is masculinity? This is the easiest way of explaining it. You've got some sort of struggle here, okay? You've got some sort of challenge. It can be an opponent, it can be a goal. And then here you've got the win, overcoming the struggle, and here you are. This, going through the struggle and perfectly crushing it and then going into freedom, is exactly what every man wants. So let's look at it. Well, you've got a woman. A woman chooses the man. Generally speaking, if you look at, you know, how our genes have traveled, not many men have passed on their genes. More women have passed on their genes than men, historically speaking. You've got the woman here, that's the struggle. You want to win her heart. You're over here. And then winning her heart, and then maybe marrying her, that's the ultimate freedom. Or take a boxing match, you've got the opponent, and you've got you here. And then you've got the win, knocking them out. Bam! That's what you really want to do, right? You want to knock them out. And you want to win. That movement right there, that is masculinity. Gaining financial freedom, pursuing that, that's masculinity. Wanting to get the highest grades possible in school, that's masculinity. All of these things that have to do with some sort of struggle, that's masculinity. And I'm not saying that women don't go through these things. I'm saying that men thrive and love these things. That is why there are more men who like video games than women, because video games are the exact same thing. They're streamlined in this exact manner. That is why there are more men who like boxing. That is why there are more men who wrestle, who do MMA, who play football, who do all of these things. And naturally, if you're attentive, you'll understand that that is why more men are in the military, more men are firemen, more men are policemen than women. Because, yes, women can do these things if they want to, but men like them more. They're programmed to like these things because these things are an outlet for masculinity to be expressed. Even if you're the greatest in the world at what you do and you're internationally recognized, this feeling inside of you won't go away, this feeling of there's something incomplete. And the only thing that actually fulfills a man is ultimate total enlightenment. And this is not some bullshit spiritual concept, this is just realism total realism. If you want, you can read the book of not knowing by Peter Ralston if you want to pursue that kind of thing. But remember, even if you express your masculinity in the highest form and you overcome the highest struggle, you won't have, you know, the peace that you're looking for. Femininity is harder to describe for me because I'm a man, but I think I've found a way of describing it in a very good manner. When it comes to what fulfills a woman the most. When I've asked older women who have, you know, children who are fairly old, you know, adults, when I've asked middle-aged um, women mothers, when I've asked young mothers too, what they generally say is that the most fulfilling thing they ever did or have done is raising children. And usually, the family in general is the most important thing for them. Why? Because femininity is the movement of love. It's the pursuit of love. It's giving love and receiving love. That's the most important thing for a woman, generally speaking. Of course, there are masculine women who will pursue an MMA career, sure. But generally speaking, women 
the majority of women are feminine and the majority of men are masculine. So a feminine woman will like to be a mother. She will be very fulfilled by that because children are an outlet for giving love and receiving love. So that's why the woman might be more attracted to cooking and knitting and crocheting or whatever it might be, creating things for other people really. They might be more concerned with gifts. They might be more concerned with, you know, social rules and this and that because these things are an outlet to love, to give love and then to receive love. So as an example with my mother and I guess with many mothers, she gets very happy when she sees me eat something that she has cooked and so as you might imagine since i don't eat what she makes anymore i haven't done that for many years she's cooked less and less and less she says that if you ever start eating the way we do and you eat the stuff that i cook i'll cook every day she always says that and that sort of points to the fact that women generally are more attracted to cooking for their children and their man because they give love in such a manner that's an outlet for giving love it's not that the cooking is a stereotypical female activity it's that taking care of other people is very feminine so as an example most nurses are women and most engineers are men why because men are more technical they see these math problems and these problems in general that you stumble upon when you do engineering and they want to break that down they want to solve it with women they like taking care of people so you're going to see women in jobs where children are involved so preschools and schools with younger children you're going to see that the math teachers and the natural science teachers in many cases they're going to be men while with the younger children, you see women. In preschools, you see women. Nurses, you see women. Um, things that, are again, are very technical, like programming, you're going to see more men. Why? Because we're attracted to different things. And you'll see this even more when you factor in a society that is free that allows people to do whatever they want. Now, when it comes to relationships, I have some great insights to give you, but we have to start with the married couple because eventually all dating goes to, you know, creating a family, generally speaking. So generally, divorces are caused by the man. And why? Here's the thing. The man is not masculine enough for the woman's taste, so to speak. He might have been masculine in the beginning of the relationship, but then slowly he becomes less and less masculine he watches too much tv he doesn't do any masculine activities his masculine energy just goes down the woman feels the lack of masculinity and she becomes more masculine so the man starts to get annoyed at the woman because she's more masculine she's not feminine like she used to be and the woman is resentful against the man because he's not masculine enough he's too feminine He's not doing anything masculine. He's not living in a masculine manner. He doesn't really change. He doesn't really learn. He doesn't really try to prove himself in any way. So what happens is they get a divorce because none of them are attracted to each other. The woman tries to find another man. The man starts wondering what's wrong with her. I didn't even do anything wrong. I just worked and I provided for the family. But he doesn't understand that it was his lack of masculinity that made the woman leave him. If you've listened attentively, you'll understand why nice guys are so unattractive and douchebags are much more attractive. Again, don't just look at the negative behavior, look at everything. A douchebag is more masculine than a nice guy. A nice guy is perceived as a spineless coward who a woman can do anything with. She can tell him to do anything and he'll do it. He has no standards, he's not masculine. A masculine man stands his ground. He is the one in control, not the woman. The man is a rock, okay? The douchebag is a rock. You can't do anything to him. A woman can't say anything that will make this guy emotionally upset. That's why he's so attractive. He doesn't care about anything the woman says. Th this doesn't mean that he treats the woman in a bad manner, necessarily. Usually that is the case because he doesn't understand this dynamic himself. You can't be behaving badly toward women. 
that's not masculinity that's just bad behavior but the fact that he isn't affected by her is good because generally speaking if you're affected by everything that a person says well that's unattractive in you know both ways really and so that's it really if you're masculine you're attractive to the feminine if you're feminine you're attractive to the masculine a douchebag is generally speaking more attractive than a nice guy because he's more masculine and so he will attract femininity and so he will get more women he will be more attractive that is how it works that is the entire dynamic now you've got an entirely new perspective on the thing masculinity is the pursuit of freedom and femininity is the pursuit of love that is why a man is more attracted to boxing than a woman is attracted to boxing and that is why a woman will like to take care of children more than a man will like to take care of children that's why a woman will be very fulfilled in the family while if a man stays in a family and doesn't really do anything he'll feel like there's something missing he wants to do something big with his life and that's the sort of masculinity that's not being expressed really so he needs to focus on the purpose the the thing that he really wants to do in the world now let's look at a very interesting situation from this new lens and let's start with the man so you like a girl and you tell her that you like her and she tells you that she just wants to be friends do you say yes or do you say no if you're an honest human being if you're an honest man in this case you'll say no why because she's not attracted to you and you're attracted to her you're a man you're attracted to the feminine but if this feminine woman isn't attracted to you why should you stay with her I'm not saying this to be rude toward this female that might have good intentions but it's dishonest from the man's perspective to stay with her I hope you if, if you're a woman can understand this that if I'm attracted to you I don't want to be friends with you and if you tell me that you don't want to uh, pursue anything with me it would be dishonest toward you for me to continue to socialize with you as if I just was your friend as if that's all I want so whenever you get a friend request from a woman that you're attracted to say no you can start out as friends if you're attracted to this woman that you might have met you can start out as friends and then you can tell her that well I like you if she says that she doesn't like you say no okay don't pursue her anymore don't stay being friends just because you think there's a potential for her to like you in five years maybe that's dishonest toward yourself and toward the woman now here's some advice for women society is trying to turn you into a man society is trying to say that everyone is the exact same thing really and that we should have 50 percent men and 50 percent women in each occupation whether it be when it comes to being a nurse or in the police force or in the military or in the fire departments of course there are women who will like these occupations because they're naturally more masculine what i'm trying to say is that this way we live in society is generally more attractive to men than women because we have a very masculine society that's all about money and order and this and that many 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 feminine women who are family oriented would be much happier just being at home raising children spending time with the most beautiful thing for you in the world i think many many mothers would be very fulfilled to do that and the women I have spoken with who are feminine and who really like the idea of having many children they love that idea of just living in a big house on a farm and just taking care of children of course I'm not saying that the only thing you will do is be inside your house no 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 you can pursue whatever thing you want really but you get to spend as much time with your children and your man as you can you don't have to work and I think that would make many women much happier and what I'm trying to say is your worth as a woman is not dictated by your occupation generally speaking at least from the man's perspective your worth is dictated by your femininity by the love you give to the people around you now look if we use Peter Ralston terminology you're absolutely nothing that's the truth of what you are really you're absolutely nothing whatsoever and that's impossible to comprehend if you don't inspect consciousness itself what it is that you're observing as an example 
the only reason as to why you think that there is something behind you is because you assume that there is something behind you. There is no evidence for there being anything behind you. That's uh, just a concept that's very helpful for navigating the world, really. In relative terms, you're a human being. And so we can also talk about what is most important for you in relative terms, because in absolute terms, that's consciousness. But in relative terms, for a man, the most important thing is his purpose. Generally speaking, this might be related to helping people. Just something that is a masculine endeavor that you're really good at and that you feel fulfilled by doing in, again, relative terms in the human realm that you live in. As a woman, the most important thing for you is the people you love, really. The people who you love taking care of. And generally speaking, that is going to be your man and that is going to be your children if you have children. So this is the dynamic, really. A woman loves her man and she prioritizes her man because the most important thing for her is to give love and receive love. The most important thing for a man is his purpose, his, his masculine endeavor in the world, really. He might be a, a smith, he might be a butcher, he might be a hunter, he might be a CEO that's helping a bunch of people all around the world. I don't know. But what I'm saying is that if the woman stops prioritizing the man and she does something else, the man won't be as attracted to her. If the man starts becoming too lovey-dovey and less masculine and he stops caring about his purpose, that can change, of course. But purpose is really not something solid. There's not some purpose for you. you can, it can be anything, really. Um, and then the woman will be less attracted to him because now he's less masculine. So as long as you do things in accordance with what you are, you're either masculine or feminine or a blend of both, then you'll be alright in a relationship and you'll be alright when it comes to feeling like the future is positive because again depression is basically thinking that the future is negative and having good mental health is basically being optimistic about everything to some degree, being stoic, not being affected by too many things really. I hope this video was useful, literally everything in it has helped me tremendously um, in how I act and how I make decisions and understanding how I behave really and how others behave and I hope uh, it has done or will do the same for you. With that said, go and achieve excellent health, I know you can do it.